Hey everyone, welcome back. I have a bit of a Sephora haul today. Um, I don't really do a lot of hauls, but I had a code for the Sephora friends and family sale and I wanted to test out a few things that I've had my eye on before the actual Sephora sale opens up to everybody at the end of this month. So here's what I grabbed. I have the House Labs Foundation. This is the Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. And I have the Dior Backstage Eyeshadow Palette in the shade Khaki Neutrals. It looks like this, and I think this is limited edition, but you know I love my greens, especially my like mossy, foresty greens. And I'm really excited that they went the green route for this collection um, and for this palette. I think there's also like a cranberry palette, but this was the one I really wanted to try. Here is a close up of the palette. And then I grabbed a Gucci blush. This is their new um, powder blush in the shade Rosy Beige number five. And it looks like this. Here is the blush. It's really beautiful. It has that gorgeous, like weighty golden compact. You open it up and there she is. It's really beautiful. Here's the foundation. It's in a beautiful, very, very heavy glass packaging. And I have the shade 260 Light Medium Cool. I pulled you in a little bit closer so you can see all the good details. My skin is still a little bit problematic right now, but it is what it is. It's actually a good time to see how foundation wears over blemishes and things like that. Let's talk about this foundation. This is the first, very first thing, I think, yeah, very first thing I'm trying from House Labs. I have not tried any of their products and they recently did just like revamp the whole line. So this is the Triclone Skin Tech Foundation I mentioned in the shade um, 260 light medium cool. This is $45 for one ounce. The packaging I mentioned is very weighty. It's in this frosted glass. It feels very luxurious for the price point. The shade range is also huge. This comes in 51 shades. And to be honest, that's what initially caught my attention. And I was especially curious about this shade, which has been sold out for like over a month and it finally came back into stock because this is described as light medium cool, but the actual shade description is that it's light medium with cool golden olive undertones. I do think that the way that House Lab seems to be categorizing warm and cool is different. I mean, every brand is different. Sometimes when brands say cool, they mean neutral. And sometimes when brands say cool, they mean pink. And sometimes when brands say warm, they mean golden. <laughs> and sometimes when brands say warm, they mean orangey peachy. So it really is very confusing. There's not necessarily an industry norm around this. But when I saw this, I was like, oh, this is a very, very neutral golden olive light medium and that is my exact skin tone i am not um, a true true olive i'm definitely a golden olive but i'm not golden peach there are also a few other call outs with this foundation it's supposed to be medium coverage weightless with fermented arnica that's supposed to help reduce redness i would not turn to my foundation for skincare claims but that's fine gotta zhuzh it up and they say shake well Blend one to two pumps onto clean, moisturized skin using their brush, fingertips, or a beauty sponge. So let's see about this foundation. It does have a pump, which I really like. I think I'm gonna do half my face with a sponge and half my face with a brush, and we'll see if there's a difference in coverage. And I'm going to start out with just one pump. And I have a little palette here, so I'm going to pump that out. I really hope this shade works for me. Okay, this is one pump. And that is exactly what I wanted the shade to look like. I'm super excited about this. I have my skincare down, but I'm not going to use any primer just so I can see how this works on its own. So I'm going to take a little bit on my finger. It does feel really fluid. I have a nude beauty blender and I'm just going to stamp that into the skin. I'm going to pick up a little bit um, with the sponge directly just cause sponges absorb a little bit more product than a brush sometimes. This doesn't feel super fluid, like it's not running down my palette. It's actually staying like exactly where I put it. I forgot to mention, they also say that this formula delivers ultra comfortable long wear performance without compromising your skin. It's weightless serum-like texture seamlessly blurs and smooths for a natural luminous finish that wears all day. Okay, that makes a lot more sense because I do feel like I get some blurring here in my pore area and um, it's not like self-setting at all. 
the natural luminous finish makes more sense to me than um, just natural because there is a glow that comes through. Oh, I'm using the um, Real Techniques 241, by the way. This is a great foundation brush because you can really just like paint on the product. And because it's flat and angled, you can paint on a really sheer, even layer of product across the skin. I'm definitely using less product than I did with this sponge, which is to be expected just because sponges by nature can absorb more product than a brush. And I also feel like I'm getting a little bit more coverage at the same time. I do think it is more radiant than I expected. I think it is um, pretty glowy, but I do like the filtered quality through the center of my face. And I also feel like is it maybe getting a little bit darker? I feel like it's maybe getting like a half shade deeper. I don't have a new concealer, so let me just add that real quick and I will come back to set this foundation because I definitely am going to have to set it. I'm just gonna use my Armani Power Fabric Concealer and I'm using the BK Beauty Angie Hot and Flashy A506 brush just to blend that in. All right, concealer is blended in. I'm going to go in with the Laura Mercier um, Ultra Blur Translucent Powder. This is their newer one. And I'm also going to take a, what is this? The Sonia G Mini Cheek Brush. I actually love this brush for powder because I like to target apply powder. I'm just going to lightly set around the under eyes and in the T-zone. Actually, I'm going to set most of the face because I actually do have a um, powder blush, the Gucci blush to play with. I am so excited about this. I picked up the shade Rosy Beige, which I thought would be a little bit um, browner, but it actually has, at least in the pan, almost a mauve undertone. It is a very, very neutral blush, it seems. Let me just, ugh, I don't wanna ruin it, but here we are. Let me give it a quick little swatch. This is a very silky feeling powder. There it is right there. It's almost cool toned, you see what I mean? There's almost like a grayish quality to this. I'm going to use a Refer 05 brush. This is their, um, I think it's their blush brush actually. It's paddle shaped, but it's also quite fluffy. So I don't wanna to get too heavy of an application at once. So I'm going to tap into the blush. Oh, I didn't even tell you about the blush. Let me tell you. Okay, this is the Luminous Matte Beauty Blush, which is kind of confusing because it's matte, but it, it's more like a pearly matte. It's definitely not shiny. I don't see any glitter through here. It's more like your skin-like matte, which I think is what they're going for. It's $49. There are currently six shades of this, and it's a pressed powder, a buildable blush for cheeks and eyes with a hydrating ultra-thin powder. I always like to start with a light hand with blushes, just because I don't want to go overboard. Ooh, really pretty. It's matte, but it's like a satin matte. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't look flat, and even though there's not shimmer in it, it's creating a very, I don't know, like pearly look to the skin. Not too pigmented, which I like. There is another shade in this range that's like a berry shade. Looks so beautiful, but I think it might be a little bit too deep for me. And I'm gonna do a very widespread application because I don't think I'm gonna wear other cheek products today. I just want the focus to really be on the blush. And when I do that, I kind of take it into the temple, sometimes even over the brow bone, just to create a really like, I don't know, one with the skin kind of look. Ooh, you know what this reminds me of? You know the hourglass um, powders, not their highlighters or their blushes, but their like diffusion powders. It kind of reminds me of that. There's like a satin pearly sheen without any sparkle. You can see that there. Especially, you know, after I powdered, I got a lot more matte, but this is adding back a bit of luminosity to the skin. So I get what they mean. It's like luminous in finish, like a luminous satin in finish, but it's a matte blush in texture. By the way, you guys know I love my sparkling water. I picked up um, a Waterloo limited edition shade. It's called Spiced Apple, and it tastes like 
Martinelli's apple cider. It's really good. All right, let's move on to eyes and let's dig into this Dior eyeshadow palette. I'm so excited about this. So this is their backstage formula. Um, they have this eyeshadow in their permanent collection in many different shades. And I've actually never tried one of these palettes, I don't think. I've tried their face palettes. Obviously, I love the Dior Backstage base products, but yeah, haven't tried this formula. It's $49. There are, well, there are eight pressed eyeshadows and this shade in the corner is actually a primer. They also did release a limited edition burgundy palette. So they have this and the burgundy for their holiday collection. I've heard really mixed things about these palettes. The number one complaint I hear is that the shadows are not pigmented enough or that they don't have very good lasting power. So I'm really curious how how these will work for me since I haven't tried the formula, but I am going to swatch them for you real quick. So first impressions based on swatches is that these are extremely smooth. They all swatched in a really creamy satin way. And even though these are pressed powders, they have a very velvety feel to touch. They have some really nice binders in them that allow for that smooth look across the skin and hopefully across the eye too. There's only one top coat, which is that top shade, that um, pearly white, and the rest are a mix of satins, glitters, and metals. I don't see a huge variation amongst the other three finishes. They're not like drastically different from each other. They all actually kind of have the same feel, like a similar velvety satin base. The other thing I notice is that even though this is called khaki neutrals, there are actually more neutral shades than there are greens. So you have um, the topper, but then you have these golden champagne shades, and then you have the brown, and there are actually only three greens in here. However, they're all very different, and on the skin, they look even more different from each other. And I have to say my favorite of the greens is the shade Emerald right here. So I'm excited to use these on the eyes, and we'll do a couple of different eye looks. I'm gonna start out by priming the eyes with the primer in here. It's, um, kind of like a putty feeling. It's a little bit creamy, so I am going to have to set it, but I'm just gonna take my Real Techniques um, medium shadow brush and just sweep a very light layer of this all over the eye to prepare the lid. It's a beige color, but it's kind of translucent. I don't know how it would look on deeper skin tones, but it doesn't really have much pigment in it. It's maybe just enough to I don't know, create a little bit of uh, a, a blanked out base, but I can't say for sure how this would look on deeper skin tones. I'm just gonna set that with some translucent powder because I have very, very oily eyelids. This palette also is giving me a little bit of Natasha Denona green-brown vibes. So maybe to start, I'm going to take a brush like the um, Sonia G soft shader brush and I am going to go into mm, this yellow gold. This is called warm gold and it's a satin. I'm just going to sweep that on like the inner part of my mobile lid and a little bit above the fold of my eye. That's actually really pigmented. It's super soft, really blendable. Then I'm gonna go into the shade Khaki and I'm just going to sweep that to lift the eye a little bit and blend it into that gold. This is a refer 14. This shade is called a glitter. I'm not getting a ton of glitter for, from it. It's more of like a satin shade with some tiny glitters running through it, but it's not, it's not that glittery. I like it though. I like that it's not just turning into like a dusty brown. I'm gonna add a bit of depth with the same brush in the outer corner and using that shade Pine Green. They all blend into each other really elegantly. I mean, that's an easy eye look right there. Just that little ombre blending everything together. I'm gonna do a few looks, so I'm not gonna finish that off with mascara, but I'm going to take a fluffy refer brush into the brown shade. This is called warm brown and it's a satin and just contour the eye. Ooh, very, very smooth. Did you see how quickly that blended? 
That was nice. Like the second it touched my eye, it blended out. And I'm going to go into Emerald, I have to. This is the Isam V27, it's a small shader brush. I'm just picking up some product here and I'm going to lay this down basically from the mobile lid up to my brow bone. See how this is staying vibrant despite being an emerald like mid-tone green? That's actually really hard to do and really hard to find, surprisingly. Kind of like the softness of this, especially if you're someone that doesn't wear a lot of color but you maybe want to dip your toes in. I think it's nice to have a soft version of a green. This is a um, metal finish. So on the eyes, you do see a bit of that shine come through. More so actually than I noticed in the swatches. And then I'm going to take um, that pine green shade with the same shader brush and just deepen up the outer corner. Then I'm going to take a number 12 rougher brush into the topper shade and I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight in the inner corner right there. This is a very cool toned, almost silver white topper. So it does evoke that like holiday, like snowflake kind of crystally topper moment. And then if we added that to this corner, then you get an interesting mixed metals, especially juxtaposed against that really yellow gold. That also feels very holiday. And this topper shade is really like sticking to the skin where I put it. So here are two different eye looks. I normally would probably finish both of these eyes off with a winged eyeliner and lots of mascara, but I actually wanna do a couple more eyeshadow looks. So I'm gonna leave them here. Obviously they would look better if they were finished off, but I just wanna show you how the different shades work together in this palette. I was going to do two different eyes, remove them, and then do a final look, but my eyes are feeling pretty sensitive today. They're already like, girl, no, not today. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do one cohesive look um, to finish off the eyeshadow review. I think I've used actually all of the shades but two, so that should be fine to do. I'm going to take a fluffy brush into, again, that brown shade, and again, just lightly kind of contour the eyes. I did redo the primer as well. I am noticing that I'm getting like glitters and dust in that primer. So that's kind of annoying, but it's fine. I mean, I'm not gonna turn to this primer on its own. And I don't even know if I would use or reach for this over um, my other primers. So it's kind of like a nice to have, but to me it's really not an essential. All right, I am taking a rougher 01 brush into the middle shade called Pure Gold, and this is a glitter. I'm just gonna sweep that all over the eye. This is a very interesting gold. It's called Pure Gold, but it has kind of a taupey undertone through it, and then the glitter or the sheen running through it is more of a classic gold, but when I think of the word Pure Gold, I think of like, this, like a 24 karat yellowy gold. It's actually a really pretty, like one and done sheeny eyeshadow. Then I'm taking the Ruffer 14 into Emerald and I want this to kind of balloon out from the outer corner. I'm going to take the Ruffer um, 02 into Golden Tan. This is the lightest, it's almost like a champagne sort of shade, just to brighten up the inner corner. This is called a satin, but it almost has a metallic quality to it because it's so bright. It instantly brightens up that eye look, you know? And it's actually very pigmented. Then I'm going to take my new Cosette S185 brush. Look how cute this is. It's like a fluffy brush, but it's teeny, teeny, tiny. I'm gonna take that into Pine Green. This is exactly why I bought this brush. I think it's perfect if you've hooded eyes just to keep the depth really, really focused and be able to control the application. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to finish off this look with a winged eyeliner and I'll come back to finish off the rest of the look with you together. All right, I'm back and I did a winged eyeliner using 
an, a liner that is truly made for this eyeshadow palette. It is Victoria Beckham Beauty Olive. That's the green liner right there. It's so beautiful. I put on lots of Tower 28 mascara. I filled in my brows and I think I'm gonna keep the lips really simple. I picked up a few Euphoria glosses and I've tried their blush, I've tried their setting spray, their primer. These are new to me and how fun are these? This is their magnetic base and these are their glosses and they each magnetize onto the base. It's extremely satisfying and just fun to use. So um, I grabbed the shade 09 Play With Fire and 08 Make Some Noise. I have worn these. These are like a very, um, they're not sticky. They're kind of like a gel-like grippy gloss. There is 08 Make Some Noise and this is 09 Play With Fire. I think I'm gonna go for 09. This shears out to like a warm nude on the lips and I think it'll go with the look nicely. Makeup is done. I'm feeling really, really shiny. Um, this foundation looks beautiful on the skin. It looks very skin-like, but I can already tell I've gotten significantly shinier since I powdered my face. So I'm going to add a little bit more powder. I am, um, worried this may be a little bit too dewy for me to use at least until the weather cools down a little bit more and of course i'm under studio lights here so i always look shinier than i look in person but i powdered and i used a setting spray off camera and i still look very shiny so we will see how this wears i'll let you know in a pinned comment um how things wore throughout the day i think i'll be able to wear test this for at least seven to eight hours i always leave a pinned comment when i'm trying new makeup as for the blush i really like the way it looks it is glowy but obviously i'm wearing that foundation underneath this powder so i feel like that's going to affect how how luminous it is but i do really love this shade it applied really evenly in a very like soft airbrushed way and the color hasn't faded at all and i feel like it's a nice um sort of sculpting blush because it has that slightly cooler undertone on me it gives some definition to my cheekbones even though i didn't use it obviously to contour or bronze just that broad application gave some dimension to my cheeks. This eyeshadow palette is already a hit with me. Um, I'll let you know how things wear throughout the day, but I can just tell you they're really smooth. It's not the most pigmented. This isn't your Natasha Denona, Pat McGrath sort of eyeshadow. This is Dior. <laughs> so it's going to be softer, but this is a very high-end and elegant feeling formula that I think makes greens wearable. Actually, any of these shades could be a one and done, but then you have three green shades to dip your toe into with varying undertones. And I think it's just a really thoughtfully curated way of bringing color into your collection if you're curious about that. And I just wanted to show you how this is almost an edited and pared down version of this palette. Obviously this leans warmer and there is much more variation, but this has a similar quality of the mix of neutrals with pops of green. The Euphoria glosses are very fun. It's a gel-like formula, not sticky at all. I also didn't mention there's no discernible fragrance in here. I don't get any tingling. It's not minty, which is great because that tends to bother my lips, but um, it's a sheer, juicy, easy formula to wear. I'm really glad that I picked up what I did. TBD on the foundation. I would really love to find a way to make it work because the shade match is so good for me. I also think if I maybe pair it with the Danessa Myricks blurring powder, that may help the longevity even more. So I'll have to keep testing this beyond today, but um, fingers crossed, I'll let you know. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see from me, if there's anything else you wanna see me review. I'm always open to suggestions. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.